post touch plugs and today we're going to do real quickly the installation process but before i get started i want to talk about how it's being done in the field right now so usually after your cable's been stressed cut and capped you're just going to take a high strength route and pack it in these pocket ends unfortunately that pocket is smooth as glass there's debris and you have grease residue from your tendon end, so it's not going to create a uh, uniform bond it's almost like a bond breaker so when you pack it with that high strength grout water can actually get inside and begin to corrode those cables. So what we did is we patented a three-part system. You have a reaming tool with 16 diamond-plated teeth and a one-inch recess. Now this is actually going to go over the grease cap and ream that pocket out. It's going to create a uniform circle and decontaminate the pocket. The next step is you take a two-part epoxy, paint it on the plug, pop it into your tendon end. Now that's going to create a 100% watertight seal and it's going to be a time and a half faster. All right, everyone, now that we covered the introduction, it's time to get to the reaming process. So I have my correct PPE on, and I have my reaming tool. You're going to put this reaming tool on a drill and not one of your high-speed grinders, because the grinder is going to run about 10,000 RPMs, whereas this drill, or right-angle drill, is only going to run about between 400 and 1,200 RPMs, so the user has complete control. Now, the reaming tool is dummy-proof because it has a one-inch recess, so you can never hit that tendon end or a grease cap. You also ream until it's flush with the slab edge. So when you can't see that reaming tool anymore, you know you've reamed enough. So let's do the reaming process. The key, like in this situation, you're going to want to ream all your pockets out, clean them, and then put epoxy. So you go exactly perpendicular into the pocket and start the reaming process before you get to the pocket so it doesn't jam up. A quick ream, you can see that it's flush. Now you can move to the next one. about two or three seconds. So, once you've reamed out all your pockets, it's time to take a blower and clean them out. This is gonna allow, this is gonna ensure that there's nothing stopping the adhesion between the PT plug, the pocket, and the epoxy. The next step, especially for if you're just getting into the system, is to use your PT checker. Now this is actually a grease cap checker, and it goes in the pocket, if this is flush, you know you've reamed enough. Also, you know that if it's flush, your grease cap's properly seated because an improperly seated grease cap would leave it like this. So you check, everything fits, and now it's time for the PT epoxy process. All right, now we're here to the final part, and that's just to epoxy your plug and pop it in the hole. There's a couple pointers. And uh, the first is use the right epoxy. There's a lot of epoxies out there, but you want to use a high strength, non-sag, two-part epoxy. That's got a working time of about 20 minutes. So we can send you a list of all the approved epoxies. But right here, we're using an Ultrabond 2. It's a great epoxy. And you're going to use about a half ounce of epoxy per plug. So here we have 20 pockets. Let's say we reamed out the top six like we did. We already epoxied these beforehand. We're going to use only enough epoxy for what we're doing. So here, I'm going to squirt out enough epoxy for those three pockets. You can see that I'm not using a nozzle. And the reason is we're going to epoxy, then uh, ream, then epoxy. So you don't want that nozzle freezing up. So you're not always going to use all 21 and a half ounces of epoxy at once. So don't use a nozzle and it won't freeze up. Each bucket of post tension plugs comes with 75 plugs and four paint brushes. So after my epoxy is out here, I'm going to mix it up. So you mix it up until it's a uniform consistency. Right now, we're going to have about 20 minute working time since it's about 80 degrees here in Miami, Florida. When it's hotter, the working time obviously slows down and when it's cooler, it extends. So I'm going to hold the plugs between my two fingers and I'm going to paint this two inch brush of epoxy uniformly around the plug. So as you can see, the whole plug is uniformly coated. I'm going to go up to my pocket, push it in until it's flush, and then grab the next one. So, holding, taking my epoxy, making a uniform bead, and popping in the plug. Once it's actually flush, you know that you've had a watertight seal. So, my last one, as you can see, the reaming process only takes about two or three seconds, and uh, the painting the plug is about five to ten. Pop it in there. Now, my final step, take any excess epoxy, and you can coat 
coat your plugs just to ensure that everything's 100% watertight. Perfect. So now we have six plugs that have been epoxied, a reamed out, and a PT plug has been applied, and we have a 100% watertight line defense. All right, to recap, that's the close tension plug system. It's about a time and a half faster. It's going to be cheaper once you add labor in. And the best part of all, it creates a 100% watertight line of fence and over the slab edge. Well, we have a right angle drill for that. So when I'm reaching over the slab edge, it'll go in each pocket just as easily. So whether you're hanging over a slab edge or you have them right in front of you, we have an application for each. So to recap, real easy. Go up to your pocket, ream out all the pockets. You want to go until that uh, reaming tool is flush with the slab edge. The next step, take a blower, blow out your pockets, and if you don't, then your plugs aren't going to fit perfectly, and that epoxy adhesion isn't going to be great. The final step, you take your two-inch brush, you paint that uniform non-sag epoxy bead around the plug, and pop it in. The final step, you take your epoxy, put it around your pocket, and now you have a 100% watertight line defense. Thanks.